Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, we are a very, very exciting time here as we are about to launch the East Midlands uh, a PA Awards 2024. Um, and we have taken some time to check in with some of our finalists and our award winners from last year. And it gives Leslie and I a great opportunity to have a chat with Amy Fisher of Michael Smith Switchgear, who was our rising star, uh, winner of the Rising Star Award. So, Amy, it's wonderful to welcome you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and and Le Leslie, it's our second year together. Are you excited as on us embarking on this journey again? I am. I can't believe that year has gone so quickly and we're we're coming round to you know starting it all off again. Um, but it's really interesting to be able to talk to our past finalists and you know, just find out what their experiences were so that we can learn from them and hopefully bring them along on the journey for 2024 and, and onwards as well. Amazing. Yeah, 100 percent. Now, Amy, uh, one thing that is really uh, we, we, we're trying to focus on as a forum and I know the wider associations and networks are looking at is about celebrating the next generation that are coming in. So can you tell us a little bit about your background? I know you mentioned that you worked before at an accounting firm, but tell yeah. us about the start of your career and how you got into working for Michael Smith Switchgear. Yeah, so I've been in a front of house role and an administration role for the past 10 years now since I left school at 16. I um, started as an apprenticeship doing a business admin qualification. Um, so after doing that for an accountancy firm for seven years in Leicester, um, I decided to take on a completely new challenge and um, ventured into the world of manufacturing engineering. Um, I'm currently the PA to the two directors, um, which is Emily, who's the operations and finance director, and then Sean, who is the managing director. Um, so at Michael Smith Switchgear, we manufacture and maintain low voltage switchgear and control panels all around the UK. Um, some of our clients are big names, so like Audi, Vodafone, Amazon, and we even do NHS hospitals as well. Um, but the PA role was new to myself and the directors because they'd never had a PA before. Mm. Um, so I feel like I definitely rose the challenge of setting a high standard for the role. Um, I asked to take on additional training. Um, tour of the workshop, the to look at the machinery, the people and what their roles are and try and develop a real understanding of how the business operates. Um, but my actual role as the PA is so diverse. No day is the same. Um, it's definitely not just making tea for meetings and answering phone calls. Um, so obviously I do the reception tasks, like answering the phones um, and things like that, being the first point of contact face to face, um, as well as administrative tasks like presentations, um, helping with the invoice in the post and um, mm -hmm. but I also help with things like the fundraising and um, recently I just raised a thousand pounds for mind and um, which was really good um, community initiatives so helping promote STEM to girls in schools and getting them involved because it's a very male dominated environment um, environmental projects becoming carbon neutral and um, so yeah it's very very diverse and I love love it so it's very new <laughs> Amazing. And what was it like going from an accountancy firm into the manufacturing uh, sector? Because I can imagine that is a quite a bit of a, a cultural shock to the system. Yeah. As well. <laughs> yeah, it's a complete, complete change. Like I said before, it's very male dominated. It's very more like casual here, a bit bantery. Um, so yeah, you've got to have your head screwed on a little bit. <laughs> but um, yeah, everyone was really welcoming, really friendly. Um, as I see my colleagues out of work and everything get along really well. I even see my old workmates still as well, so, which is really nice. <laughs> When... I think in my career, I've done from oh. academia into like private sector and things like oh. that. And the pace of the work is really different, not, you know, as well as the, you know, the different people and, and all sorts, just how they think about business is very different. Yeah. And I can imagine the job specification was, mm -hmm. seems to have been like a bit of a blank canvas. If there wasn't anyone that you were kind of taking over from, Amy, That's you cool. kind of had to try and make that role your own. for myself just so I know exactly what I'm doing and then like if someone else was to come into my role too or just like to help out then I would be able to pass it on kind of easily yeah and like I so think... I made the role my own literally which yeah, is really and nice. <laughs> I, I think as well it's um coming into a male dominated environment and for working for two people that didn't have a PA before that must have been really challenging to think because I think it's, uh, you know, we all know it's a role that's based around trust as well and the close relationship between the PAEA and also um, 
the managing director or the executive that you work for. So was it quite difficult to kind of establish that relationship and what the role was going to be? It was in a way. I feel like sometimes the communication channels were a bit mixed up because some people who weren't my directors may have been telling me to do things. And because it's like they never had a receptionist or admin staff before ever. So it was kind of difficult to set um what's the the word i can't remember the word i'm thinking of boundaries Boundaries, yeah to set boundaries in my role so you do have to be stern sometimes but it overall it was it was great it was really it was easy enough i think leslie leslie you have that challenge as well sometimes as you know in, in i think whatever stage of your career as a business support manager, you get people that kind of everyone's kind of fighting for your time and they want you to be able to help and support Especially them. Especially if you're good at your job too. <laughs> yeah. Have you had that in the past, Leslie, as well? Yeah, very much so. You know, the, the, the adage of spinning plates and keeping them up there while you move on to the next thing is is always uh, in a job. And it's it's good that you recognise that at the very beginning, Amy, because that is a skill that you'll take with you throughout your career. So if, if that's yeah. Probably- and I think we, um, when we, when we first established the awards, and, and you know, Leslie, I, and the committee members have reached out to everybody and encouraging them to make nominations. It was your manager that nominated you, Amy, wasn't it? And you got nominated yeah, but, two categories. Yeah. yeah. So Sarah from ER Recruitment originally messaged me and said, "Oh, you should put your name forward." But she's the one who got me my job too, so that was really nice. So then. I mentioned it to my directors and she said that she was going to enter me in anyway. So as a surprise, (laughs) that was really nice. So everyone was like really encouraging me to to put myself forward for it. I think that's really interesting because a lot of, you know, when we're communicating the awards to a lot of our members or our community or PAs that are based anywhere in the West or East Midlands, we're going to them and saying, you know, nominations are now open, but a lot of them will say, how do I communicate that to my boss? Because we haven't got the uh, and even if we did have their email addresses, their PAs or EAs are managing their inbox. So it's interesting that you had that conversation with them. How did you mention that? I literally sent them a Teams message and just said, how would you feel about it? But um, we also have weekly face-to-face meetings as well. So I mentioned it again then. I, mean, she I was love like, oh, that. I was going to do it as a surprise. <laughs> but, you know, you were thinking, you, you've you gone and mentioned it. Somebody brought it to your attention. No. Uh, who you've, you know, got a relationship with previously. You've um, seen it and then they were going to do it as a surprise. And yeah, which is really it, nice. Think, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, getting the think, acknowledgement is crazy. You know, um, when, as, as part of our process, when someone makes a nomination, you're then asked to complete an information form. So I know mm-hmm. that you did that. And I think the biggest challenge, and I'm sure Leslie will agree with me, is that people will say, you know, I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing the day to day things. Leslie, we get that a lot, don't we? Yeah. And we're not good at, at selling ourselves or bigging ourselves up at all. Yeah, and I think it's 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 just about celebrating the the things that we were doing. I think when you go back, when I went back through 2023 and I was like, what have I achieved? And I know there's some really significant things, but actually when you look back through and you see all of the things that you've done, it's amazing. And Amy, we, you've done some incredible things. I know men's mental health is really important for you. You're very, yeah. very CSR. Um, my, you've got a very CSR mindset and you you know want to be able to give back to the community as much as possible. So how did you embark on that journey? Because nowadays, particularly in some of the bigger organisations, you've got mm-hmm. people that are employed for CSR, you've got people that are employed in wellbeing yeah. roles, et cetera. But that doesn't mean that you're excluded. It just means that you can try and get involved a lot more. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely helps that my two directors are always there to guide me and they're really inspiring. They do the, the exact same things that I'm doing, like in their day-to-day life even too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just really good. It's it's just following from the leaders, which is what peop- what we're doing as well. So we should be encouraging the other people who work here as well. And for anyone that's kind of, you know, at that stage who gets nominated this year and thinks, oh, I need to start writing some, you know, things on my form to explain about some of the achievements that I've done. Can you tell us about some of the things that you've done? Uh, Yeah, I actually got my submission here. I thought I would print it off just in case they got brought up because I'm like, I actually did so many things. But you know what? It's really nice to just like write down all that you've done in the past year 
and just think, oh my God, I actually achieved a lot. And sometimes you don't actually realize how much you achieve, even like the smaller things. Um, but before I entered for the awards, so we did a skydive um, for Hope Against Cancer. We yeah. raised over £3,000 for that. And um, I mentioned before about promoting STEM in schools. So we did that every year. Um, we go to a homeless shelter and donate like food and clothes and essential items. Um, and I do that in my spare time too. I take that like out of work hours, but I get everyone involved at work. Um, oh, bless you. Um, Sorry, Amy. I think we just carbon lost. Carbon Nutri- different awards. <laughs> Sorry, lovely. We just Did lost you lose Sorry, just take a <laughs> where you were just talking about carbon neutral. Oh, yeah. So I helped the company achieve carbon neutral status, which was really amazing as well. Yeah. Um, was that hard? Wonderful. Was that a big? Was that- it was a huge task. Particularly um, for-, for manufacturing, I can imagine. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, yeah, I had to spend several months looking at the um, direct and indirect emissions. So, like, staff travel, deliveries, and all the things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't even think about. Obviously, like the gas and electric and the waste but it took months and I was new at this point too. So that really helped me understand the business as well. So I feel like I learned a lot doing that, but um, yeah, we went on to win further awards because of that too, which was really good. Um, We recently won from Schneider Electric, a global award for all the work that we're doing for the environment. And obviously Mm -hmm. without becoming carbon neutral, we would not have achieved that at all. So that that was really good. That was really good to be involved in. I do that every year now. <laughs> Amazing. And Leslie, for you, how, how I just get so excited by hearing about all these different things that are being championed by that kind of next gen coming through. How like it, it's it's it gives us so many ideas and suggestions that we can share with the wider community. People are always inspired by other people's stories, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And I think some people you know and maybe we'll wait for somebody to invite them on to a working group or invite them to contribute to something um and that's not often the way you know to actually you don't wait to be asked for a voice at the table you know if you've got something to say find a way of communicating it either to your colleagues or to your directors um you know and, and it'll be welcomed it really will be welcomed and i think you demonstrated that really well amy because you know yeah. involved yeah, you want to learn about the company, so you've gone out and done things, you, you, you've taken them through to the carbon neutral uh, information and things, and you work with them. But yeah, you're learning and you're developing all the way. And I think that's so interesting to be able to demonstrate to other people that think, oh, I can't do that. Nobody's asked me to do that. Don't wait to be asked. Just, yeah, just get involved, and I think is a big message from me. Yeah, um, and like I said to the judges, um, and I'll say it now too, but I feel like I have a lot of ideas in my head of how to do things and what I want to achieve. And it's just finding a way to put those thoughts into action. But like, yeah. I just have so many things that I want to do and what I want to achieve. And like I said before as well, it affects like your life at home too. And it inspires others to do good things as well. Yeah, 100%. So... Uh, one of you, you said that you enjoyed the networking parts of this as well. So throughout the process, you know, from that time you were nominated, and you had the information form, and yes, it is daunting to go and you know think that you're going to sit in front of a panel of judges. Uh, but you had lot. There was lots of networking opportunities, lots of time to get the finalists together. Did you enjoy that? Was that nerve wracking? Yeah, it was nerve wracking um, at the start, but I think one time I did bring one of my friends who also works in the admin profession. So that was really nice to like introduce them to to the PA forum and everything. And I knew Sarah, who I mentioned previously too. But yeah, the sixes social cricket was really, really good. That was definitely my favourite one. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you doing quite well at that as well, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got zero points. <laughs> and, I got so bad. I, I hit the, it, but yeah, I got zero points. <laughs> and I know on that particular night, there was a, another award ceremony on that night, which some of your oh. um, directors couldn't go yeah. to. But what was the buzz like within the organisation? You know, Hannah, how proud they were of you. Yeah, they were really proud. I got back and I have my little trophy, which is next to my desk as well for yeah. everyone to see. Um, but yeah, they were really, really proud. Good. Fantastic. And <laughs> what opportunities would you would you say, you know, we're, we're now, what, four months on? How What opportunities have kind of presented themselves for you since that, since we've had the awards um, done? So, yeah, since then, I've had discussions with my directors about other roles in the company. 
um because they want to be able to utilize my skills better so i think they're going to move me to the production coordinating side of things which is really exciting so that's to do with like organization skills um and even customer service skills still and i'll still be working really closely with the directors but also more internally in the actual production side of things which will be really really cool yeah. so i'm looking forward to that so it's like a kind of a promotion which is really nice yeah <laughs> and i think you know with um the way I've always seen our awards is that, you know, a lot of people, there there will be people out there that are just absolutely not interested in entering any awards at all. And they don't want to be in the spotlight and they don't want anything like that. And that's absolutely fine. There are people like that who, who don't want to be part of it. And we respect that. Absolutely. But I have seen now for eight years people who have come into this process and regardless of whether they've won or not, it's helped to build their confidence. It's helped to have more self-belief in what they do. It's helped for them to understand more about their role and more about the achievements that they make. It's it's take it's giving them the confidence to have conversations within oh, the definitely. organization that they might not have had before. And regardless of whether you've won or not, it's opened doors for people to for you to have a wider network of people that you can go to and build relationships with and present opportunities for the future and I think there's so many positives around being part of a community that builds up this process and that's why we then Leslie and I feel so passionately about it along with our committee and um, to yeah. be able to champion them so what would be your final words of advice Amy for anyone that's either thinking about you know going through the process or they might be nominated this year from you what would you like to share with them? I would just Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Never say never. You can achieve anything that you want to achieve if you have a positive mindset and you believe in yourself. Like you can do it. Just go for it. The 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 worst thing that's going to happen. What is the worst that's going to happen? Being yeah. nominated in itself is an amazing achievement. So I would say just do it. Yeah, <laughs> and if I could ask a side of that as well, you know, for those of uh, those people that are coming into the profession as new you know a lot of us networks and associations and societies have been around for many many years but we all need to take ourselves back to that first time when we went you know when we came to our first networking event mm -hmm. or we went out there and we you know tried to network with other people you know we want to be able to celebrate and bring in the next generation so that they can share their experiences along with all of our more experienced and seasoned members and I think everybody can learn so much from each other um, that we would, what would be your encouragement for them to go to those types of events? Because it is, it is nerve wracking when you walk into it that. It is really nerve wracking. Um, yeah, I, I just mingle. So I, I have literally diagnosed anxiety, but no one would ever, ever expect it. And I think it's just overcoming that and putting yourself in these positions mm. outside your comfort zone to overcome this anxiety and the fear and, everyone's so friendly and most of the time you're just overthinking like oh yeah. I'm gonna go there I'm just gonna stand on my own no one's gonna come up and talk to me you as soon as you walk in the room people are coming up to you like oh hi what's your name um and you sometimes there's Prosecco there which also helps <laughs> I think the hardest thing actually is going home and then not you're trying to remember everyone's name that you've actually spoken yeah, to because you've so spoken difficult. to that many people yeah. but yeah. I think you know we um, I really appreciate you sharing your story and inspiring people hopefully to push forward and make a nomination and uh, yeah. we look forward to continuing to see and share your journey Amy because it's been really exciting and your energy is next level <laughs> love it thank you great isn't it Leslie it is it's brilliant Amy thank you so much for joining us today because yeah, it, thank you it really much. will help I think you know, people seeing being new into the role as well but having that um confidence just to go forward and, and put themselves yeah. out of the comfort zone as you say Amazing. Yeah, and anyone's welcome to message brain. me watching this. If you want advice, feel free to message me on LinkedIn. <laughs> absolutely. I think you'll have I think you'll get me. quite a few messages, Amy, hopefully. Yeah. But we absolutely appreciate it. And thank you for being such a champion. We really, yeah, we really thank appreciate you so much. it. All right, take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.